right, let's do let's do interviews. Okay, uh, if I go back to training materials. So, you know, this is just a refresher. The interview look needs to look like this. It has to have uh, speaker labels. So the speaker labels have to be have uppercase. So you can see Adrian starts with a capital A, interview starts with a capital I. It needs to have a colon and a space after it. And it needs to be at the beginning of a paragraph. So it needs to kind of look like this. It doesn't have to be bold. That bold is just there so you can see it. You can see further down, they're not bold. But they do have to have uppercase and colon and space and be at the beginning of a paragraph. And there should be a blank line before them. So a whole blank line. Um, now, it's usually, you know, usually you see these in Word documents. Uh, if, it, if it's in a Word document, I strongly recommend you save it from Word as the older .doc format. So the latest versions of Word save in what's called .docx, um, and, and the extension is .docx. Uh, if you can see the extensions, I know Windows hides extensions from you. From a, for a file, but but if you look, then uh, docx is the default. But in Word, you can save as the older format, which ends in dot doc. And that for interviews, I recommend you do it because uh, you'll have less trouble. Um, so this is a dot doc file deliberately. Uh, so that's what they look like. And uh, let's. Close a few things, do a bit of tidying. So I'm going to create uh, an interview. Create a project, it's called interview. Okay. And select our data. training data files, and there's my mock interview. This is not meaningful data. It was mocked up because we don't, I don't, I've never seen an interview that was not confidential. So um, this is a fake interview, selected it, hit okay. Now with this, you have to uh, make a settings change to get uh, those speaker tags uh, extracted. With the survey, you didn't, because when you give it a CSV data file, Lexamancer automatically will look for column headers. But if it's just a Word doc, you need to tell it that there are uh, speaker labels in it. And you do that here by ticking dialog. Um, so it transforms each dialog marker in, in the text into a tag, which is then inserted into each relevant sentence. So, so every place where uh, like Sally speaks, it takes the, the speaker label Sally, makes a tag out of it and puts it into every sentence following that tag until it finds a new speaker label. So you need to set that. So where was that again? It's in text processing settings and it's called dialogue tags under tags here. So now if I run uh, generate concepts is, oh, so let's make sure that we untick that, mark tags as attributes, because we probably will want these on the map. Uh, all right, so let's run it, run the second stage, generate concept seeds. And have a look over here. Okay, auto tags. There are the concept or the, the keywords, the seed terms from the material. And in auto tags, I can see speaker Adrian, speaker interviewer, and speaker Sally. These are the speaker tags. Now, I recommend having a look as soon as you can, as soon as you run generate concept seeds, do have a look in here to make sure you're getting the tags that you expected from your interviews. If you're not, the first thing you should do is go and make sure those files are um, .doc rather than .docx. Uh, you can do that here, like if you 
go back to select documents and uh, we'll make this a bit wider. So this tells me this is a .doc file. If it was .dot a .dot .docx, then I there you know that you might have trouble. If it was a .docx, you may not get all the speaker tags because the Lexamancer's parsers have trouble disentangling all the .docx file format to work out where the dialog tags are. Whereas .doc is pretty easy. Uh, if it was plain text, it would also work fine. This is something about the dot ox dot dot doc x XML format, which is which is difficult uh, to deal with. So again, if when you go into your auto tags, you're not getting all the uh, speaker tags that you expected, make sure your files are docx. And then if they uh, sorry are not docx, they are dot doc. If that is true. Go and double check that they, you have a blank line between your paragraphs and your speaker labels are uppercase. If the speaker labels are single digits, like one, two, three, eight, ten, 10, um, then uh, you will also have trouble uh, because, um, well, there, so the reason, um, the reason that uh, would give you trouble if you have your speaker label just a digit one, uh, first of all, it's not uppercase, so it's not guaranteed to work anyway. Um, but also, the the stop word removal actually gets rid of single digits, so uh, you'd have to go and remove digits uh, from the stop words. Just just quickly, uh, where do you edit stop words under text processing settings? The button here called Edit Stop List. You need to load the language you're currently working in. It won't automatically be there. So if we work in English, bring that in. And then you can see that um, Okay, well, sorry. Um, digits won't work. Um, but uh, what okay, they won't work because they're not uppercase. What I was going what I should have said was that if they're single letters, so if I have I, even if it's capital I, that won't work by default because uh, single letters are removed in the stop list. Yes, that's right. That's what I was supposed to say. Sorry about that. Um, so you can make it work. Um, so if you go into your stop list and let's keep going, there's I. So if I remove this from the stop list, then you can use that as a speaker label. So I for interviewer and maybe R for respondent. Um, so let's go and find R and again, remove that. So if you remove those single letters, you can then use them as speaker tags as long as they're uppercase in your data. Uh, just a small technical gotcha, which some people have if they use single letters as their interview markers. Um, so you know, remove those single letters, single characters from the stop word list, and then hit OK, uh, and then you should be able to use them as speaker tags. Uh, I don't want that to happen. I don't want to change the stop list, so I'm going to cancel out of that. All right, so I've got my speaker labels here, and then I run generate the source. So once again, once our code book's ready go into concept coding settings and work out what we want to do with all the tags and the variables. Now, um, so I've got my concepts on the map and that's okay. Uh, maybe I want to see the speaker, speaker labels on the map and that would do it. Uh, so if we finish this, uh, we can do that. We ran through, uh, shouldn't take a second. We go. You can see the speaker labels are indeed on the map and also on the right hand side, down the bottom, um, and so forth. Now, if you want to uh, remove the interviewer's utterances, so you know we can have a look at what the interviewer says. If we go to the rank concept list, scroll right to the bottom, and there's the interviewer. Seven text segments coded with interviewer. We have a look at those and see what they are. You can see here, uh, we can view all of them. Uh, this is what our interviews look like 
when you go to the full text view. Um, so you can you can check them out and see if if they're worth keeping or you know if the interviewer says a lot, um, then you might want to keep what the interviewer says because if I ask a really long question and someone gives a short answer, then you won't understand the short answer unless you include the question in the model in the analysis. So do it's not it's not always true that you want to just remove what the interviewer says because if they say if the interviewer, if, if there's a, a rich dialogue going on between uh, the interviewer and the participants, and the interviewer is contributing a lot of the, the ideas, then it won't make a lot of sense if you rip out wh whatever they say. So it's not always the way you want to go. But if you do want to go that way, and you want to suppress what the interviewer says, can you use these this kill concept technique? So go to kill concepts, and I say, speaker, interviewer, move it across. What it says is any text segment which comes from the interviewer um, will be suppressed, will be filtered out and won't be in the model. So then I go, okay, and run that again. And now if we have a look, there's no, not only is the interviewer tag disappeared, but everything the interviewer says is no longer being coded. Um, so that whole area that used to be here has now gone because all, all the utterances from the interview are not being coded and are not in the model anymore. Mm -hmm.